Hey guys, so I didn't think I'd be talking about this topic again, but I gave myself a few hours to calm down because I think I was just extremely frustrated and I was going to say things that I was going to regret. So here we are a few hours later, I've had time to think on it and sit on it and I've thought and sat and here's the video, okay? So I probably would have had stronger words a few hours ago. Um, I did a video on... Let me check my notion actually for this organization queen uh on tuesday i did a video on be better be better company who is a tiktoker and he runs a business essentially and so he uses the social media platform to funnel people into his business now his whole shtick is talking about the downfalls of companies the downfalls of influencers calls everything a scam allegedly allegedly just goes around and calls everything a scam and is super harsh with people and then gets really upset when those fans hit back at him and then you know makes these stories about how he's actually related to these people or you know blah blah like basically does anything he can to get views at the same time he talks about wellness companies so he was like the downfall of let me live the supplement company by courtney kardashian he was the whistleblower for that she's now being investigated for false advertising and a few other things but he has his own wellness company which is the honey company which is the be better company um, I showed you guys his website recently and I talked about how I thought it was overpriced and how I thought the claims were exaggerated. And then I talked about his recent blunder with one doing a video with Jake Paul. Not a great person to associate yourself with. Mainly when trying to look really unbiased and like this smart business guy, it's not... First of all, you're reviewing the company and the guy who owns the company is in the video with you. Obviously, you're not going to be objective. And then two, I mean, Jake Paul, not a great guy. And then he did a video basically dissecting why Kamala Harris is kind of marketing for her political campaign isn't working. And then we found out that he works for his dad's company, or at least his dad has a company where they like make rubber, uh, which not very eco-friendly. And they were given a few million by the Trump administration during, I believe it was COVID. You know, when a bunch of companies were getting a bunch of stuff to help them out, um, not that they needed the help. And he flashes his MBA in multiple videos. I talked about typically what is required to do an MBA. That is not me saying that every single time someone does an MBA, this is what happened. I said when I looked into doing an MBA, the requirement was typically five years worth of business experience. So, so that's having your own business. Did I ever say that he didn't have his own business? No. Did I ever say that he didn't work hard at his business? No. Did I say, I don't know, go attack and harass his family? No. He had lost 150,000, subs uh, not subscribers, well, followers. On his TikTok account, he had lost about 100 to 150. I wasn't exactly sure where he was at when he posted the video, but I saw a few screen recordings of him being at like 980,000. He is currently at 830,000. He has lost 150,000 followers before I ever posted my video. There were videos in TikToks that I showed you guys that I reacted to and didn't really express an opinion on them. I just showed you guys them at the end which talked about theories about his family, his LinkedIn, how he got his MBA, him being an Epo baby, Airboss. All of his comments under his TikToks right now are, what's Airboss? Tell us about Airboss. You're an Epo baby with 50,000 likes, 100,000 likes, 20,000 likes. There are TikToks that I watched and reacted to with 100,000 likes, which you can imagine how many views that is if it has 100,000 likes. I don't know why, maybe it's because we spoke in the past, uh, but he decided to slide into my DMs and say that I am defaming him. So I am going to go step by step again. I rewatched my video in the morning just to make sure I didn't say like, you suck and you scammed my family out of a million pounds. Like I clearly didn't say that. So I think everything I said was either theory and opinion or me reacting to something or saying like, yeah, you did a video of Jake Paul, that's not great, which is once again an opinion. So. Uh, let me just go over my video. He had, uh, actually, let's just go over the DMs. He messaged me about Michaela Nogueira before, and then he said, Hey Angelica, I just saw a YouTube video on me. I have to be honest, I was really disappointed to see how much misinformation was present in that video and how much he mischaracterized everything about me and my business. I don't think I mischaracterized anything about his business or him. You did a video of Jake Paul, bad luck. Your company is a wellness brand that I'm not a massive fan of and I think is overpriced. And the last bit was just me posting TikToks and reacting to them and saying, yeah, not great. And reacting to your apology video and your original Kamala Harris video. There's nothing really there that I could have mischaracterized. I was just reacting to TikToks. Like really disappointing, I can disprove literally everything you said in that video. And I'll be publicly responding to everything you said and debunking it with evidence. Right, okay, so debunk the fact that you did a video of Jake Paul debunk the fact that you did a misinformed video on Kamala Harris, debunk your apology, 
debunk the fact that I believe your honey is overpriced. Debunk TikToks that I reacted to about allegedly you being an Oppo baby. Like, what are we debunking with evidence here? And I don't understand this like thinly veiled threat, essentially. There's been a lot of horrible misinformation spread about me this past week to the point that my address got doxxed. That's like, I'm sorry, but that's literally got nothing to do with me. I posted my video after you had already lost 150,000 followers and you had already posted your apology video. Someone showed up to our house in the middle of the night, obviously disgusting. My family and I had to leave. The police are now involved, but I was most disappointed in your video as a long time fan of your YouTube channel. Seeing how you twisted so many facts. Twisted what facts? Again, you posted a video of Jake Paul. Again, you posted a video about Kamala Harris that was full of misinformation. Again, you are a Nepo baby, which people didn't realize. Again, you are selling wellness products that I don't agree with. I don't agree with the claims, I don't agree with the false marketing, and I don't agree with the price, but that's my opinion. It's my opinion. I said I wouldn't be angry. You know, I gave myself a few hours of breathing time. So. Didn't check anything you said. From my company to the MBA requirements in Canada, I said most of the time, typically, I actually think I used the word typically to get an MBA, you need business experience. So it's a master of business administration. I said typically, and then I said in the UK, but you're in Canada, I was just, giving context to one MBA is. It was not an attack on you. I said, typically, typically, this is what you need for an MBA. And you then use that MBA to make people think you know more about the topics than you do. That's all I said. I don't know what was wrong about that. To the MBA requirements in Canada, to the absolute absurd conspiracy theory about my father's company. I mean, the theory is that your father owns a rubber creating company and you have that on your LinkedIn, and he was given money by the Trump administration during a time where other companies was gi were given money. And because of that, people linked it to your disagreement with Kamala Harris. There is no weird, evil conspiracy theory. It is just people bouncing ideas off their noggins. We're just thinking, why would you in your right mind do a video on Kamala Harris full of misinformation for fun? People then look into your dad and he clearly benefited from the Trump administration. Whether that be true or not, that's what people found on LinkedIn. I didn't say whether that was correct or incorrect. I didn't say whether that was morally right or wrong. All I did was say, this is the video you posted. You posted an apology. And why are people mad at it? Because of what they found on LinkedIn. There was no judgment in what I said. I think I say things pretty as they are, middle of the road. Just here, here is, Here's what's happening. The only reason you're upset is because allegedly you're a fan of my content. But just because you're a fan of my content doesn't mean I then, what, like just don't talk about you? Well, if you just like kick a puppy, do I say, oh, sorry, he's a fan of my content. I can't talk about that. Come on now. Like I've had massive influences in my DMs all the time. I've had seasoned assists. I've had people in my DMs. I've had people try and, you know, emotionally manipulate me. I make content regardless. And when you said, oh, you could have just reached out to me. No, I don't do that. I didn't do that for James Charles. I don't do that for Jeffree Star. I don't do that for Tati and I don't do that for you. So that's how my channel works. And if someone's got a fucking problem with that, take it up with someone else, not me. This is why I'll be publicly responding to you, specifically walking through every single piece of that YouTube video that was so incorrect. It's absolutely defamatory. I mean, we'll go through my video and let me know guys, you guys, let me know if it was defamatory. But if this is a thinly, once again, thinly veiled threat, of a cease and desist. Maybe your rich father can help you with that because I don't have the financial backing for that, but maybe your father can help you with that and you can make, you know, you can feel good about yourself. Maybe that will help with the cancellation. I don't know. I wanted to at least give you the respect you didn't give me to let you know that I'll be posting a public video. Do you, do you reach out to people before you take them down? Your whole career is the downfall of this. Crumble cookie is a scam because I don't like the way it tastes. Do you reach out to every single one of them before you do a video on them? Did you reach out to the D'Amelios when you got, what, 30 million views? Talking about their downfall and everything they're doing wrong? Did you reach out to them? Did you give them that respect or did you not? That can easily disprove. Disprove what? The fact that I think your honey's overpriced. What are we disproving here? The fact that you did a video on Jake Paul again. Again, do I have to repeat myself again? The fact that you did a video on Kamala Harris was full of misinformation. The fact that you had to do an apology. The fact that people found your dad's LinkedIn. Like, what are we disproving here? I think your honey's overpriced. That's it. That's my opinion. Lock me up. I deserve to go to jail. The fact that you have direct contact with me and could have asked me for a comment or to share my... I don't do that. I don't do that because comments are biased. If I'm talking about someone and... 
they give me a comment, that comment will not be true. There is one side of the story, another side of the story, and the truth. And the truth is somewhere not on those two sides. So I didn't reach out to you and I didn't reach out to anyone else criticizing you. I just reacted to things and talked about what I saw with my own two eyes. Then he sends me an unsupported message, which you have to use the Instagram mobile app to view this message. I don't have Instagram on my phone anymore. So he made Sunny Honey myself from scratch in my kitchen. I I don't care. He tapes them on each jar with my mom and grandmother and I never say the company was to make money or to scam anyone. I did it to help people. I renovated the office. I didn't say any of that. Like, what were you, what, this is delusional. This is delusional. I didn't talk about the process. I even debunked the fact that some people said you were like drop shipping stuff. I said, I don't think you are. What I said was, it's too expensive. I don't care where you get your jars from. I don't. What I said was 80 pounds for honey is ridiculous. And saying that honey will fix your mental health is ridiculous. Saying that will give you more stamina is ridiculous. And it is the same bullshit, quite frankly, that you accuse Kourtney Kardashian of with her Lemmy Live brand. That's what I said. That's what I said and it's my opinion. I'm literally shaking because I'm so angry. Honey being the base is expensive to make, work with, to ship, blah, blah, blah. You should be utterly ashamed of yourself for destroying my small business I created. This emotional manipulation, I literally had to talk about this when I was doing my wedding bride dress video. And she was using that whole, I am a small business and, and you are, you know, ruining my small business. What emotional manipulation? Just because you're a small business doesn't mean you will be less likely to scam someone or damage something or do something wrong. You're just a small business, like I don't care. I love to support small businesses, but if you're doing something wrong, I'm gonna say it. And once you see my video, I hope that you understand how harmful and hurtful what you did was. How harmful and hurtful was to do what? Oh, he just responded to me. Okay, then I respond to him and I said, hi, first of all, I wanna say that when I post content, it is without bias. And so I do not reach out to anyone ever. You can absolutely try to disprove everything I said, if you wish, but I think you have bigger fish to fry. Like the fact that you lost 150,000 followers in like a day. Most of my video was me reacting to your video slash videos of other TikTokers or expressing opinions. I said nothing about how your honey business started. So you sending notes, etc., has nothing to do with me or my opinion. At most I called your business overpriced and a wellness thing with minimal scientific backing, which I stand by still. Nothing I said was defamatory, so let's not even start that game. I appreciate you sending me your business process, but once again, it has nothing to do with what I said. That's me nicely saying I don't care. Like, I, I, that's not what I was criticizing. And it, it means nothing to this story, really. I know that sounds really mean, like me saying it now, but I think I just have to be really blunt because I don't understand like what that is in reaction to. I didn't say anything about your process. I outlined your career on TikTok, videos people disagreed with, theories about you and your career education and touched on your business venture. If you don't like any of that, that is fine. I haven't liked the things people said about me either at times, but that's how the cookie crumbles. Have a nice day. Also, I didn't destroy your business, you destroyed it yourself. When I posted my video, you had already posted an apology and lost over 100,000 followers. You have yourself to blame and are now deflecting onto me to make yourself feel better. Really, Angelica, you don't think calling me the biggest scammer on TikTok with a photo of my family on your channel is at the very least extremely dramatic? Said, no, it's not. The title was tongue in cheek. The same way you called Crumble a scam because you didn't think it tasted good. We can play this game, but you will look like a hypocrite every time. Also, your family is a topic of conversation because of you, not me. I didn't make the original TikToks with millions of views. Others did. I just reacted to them. Take it up with them, not me. I did take it up with them. And the main one posted a follow-up distracting much of what was said once I explained how misinformed she was, but she, but you didn't include that in your video either. And she didn't take down her original one because she gets paid for views. Crumble is a billion dollar company, a little different from my small business I run from my parents' basement. First of all, Crumble being a billion dollar company has nothing to do with the fact that you are a hypocrite. You do one thing, but you hate when people do it to you. Takedown of the D'Amelios, the downfall of the D'Amelios. The moment you have a downfall, the moment there's a takedown of you, oh, woe is me, but we've all done that. And I said that in my first video that you are making typical mistakes that we all made. I used to be such a massive hypocrite, <laughs> like such a massive hypocrite. I would do cancellations of people and videos of millions of views tearing people apart and then I was upset when I got cancelled. <laughs> of course, of course, everyone is. We're all hypocrites. But you can't do downfall of videos and then be upset when people do a downfall of you because chances are your Charlie D'Amelio video could have led to her receiving death threats to someone like crazy showing up to her house. You could have been responsible for that. No, there isn't much difference between me calling you a scammer in my title and you calling Crumble Cookie a scammer for selling cookies that you don't like the taste of. It's the same thing. I don't care if they're a billion pound company and you're a small business. It's the same thing. If you don't like it being done to you, don't do it to others. Regardless of if someone's a massive business or not, 
do to others how you'd like done to yourself. Now, I wanna to react to my video because now that you can see what his issues were with my video, I wanna go through my video again. I'm not gonna show everything, so don't think I'm like taking things out of context. The video will be linked in the description so you guys can watch the full thing. I'm just gonna skip through a few things that he had an issue with. And we can see if I said anything that was defamatory, I'm gonna put myself on 1.5 speed. You guys know the drill. Yeah. I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip the bit at the beginning where I introduce kind of who he is and what he does because it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'm gonna get to like the NBA part, shtick, um, that they obviously want him like essentially dead. He's literally saying like, they hate that I'm exposing this and what it means for them and that they're gonna become irrelevant, blah, blah. And he made, he essentially went more viral because of how much he was leaning into the fact that everyone he talks about hates him and everything like that. So Charlie after ruining my life and blocking me for suggesting she dance more essentially. Now the MBA, let's go back to that for a minute. So in a lot of videos he'll say that he's got a master's in marketing. So I'm assuming he did obviously the master's in marketing and then he went on to do the MBA without having as much business experience as maybe as usually wanted for these MBAs. But here's where he actually mentions that he's got the MBA rather than just the master's degree that he usually talks about. So I was the youngest person can. Masters in marketing uses for some things and then the MBA use for other stuff. Now he uses his content to promote his wellness honey brand, which is very interesting because he does talk down on a lot of wellness. Why did I even talk about this MBA? Oh, at the beginning of the video, God. No, it's a master of business administration and it's a professional postgraduate degree, which is focused on business administration. And he covers various areas of business administration. Like it doesn't really matter, but it basically just focuses on what, what it takes to run a successful business. And typically you will start your MBA five years um, after kind of starting your own business and running your own business for a while. That's usually how it happens. So usually people won't get an MBA until they're like close to their thirties or even further. It's something you do when you've already worked on a business for a while and you just want extra information. And typically you won't get admitted or like approved to do an MBA if you haven't got this few years of business knowledge or experience. So he's the youngest in Canada apparently, which is a flex. And I guess it was a flex for everyone they were watching his videos. Cause I mean, it sounded like he kind of knew what he was talking about, but it actually turned out to be more suspicious than anything. And this MBA feels a little bit pointless now that everything's come out. This is probably the video that you guys all saw. So what I said was typically when people do an MBA, it's because they've ran a business for a while and they got the MBA and that's why they were approved. You have been using the fact that you're the youngest like MBA graduate in Canada for a long time, which means typically what you're saying yourself is that typically the age is older because you're the youngest, right? You can't have it both ways. You can't be saying I'm the youngest, but also then having an issue with the fact that I said most people that get an MBA have run a business for a while. Like what was defamatory about that? <laughs> grow up, like actually grow up. So the average age is 28 to 29 years old with most students ranging from mid twenties to early thirties. However, the average age of MBA student varies a lot and many applicants above and below this average age are admitted to MBA program. So I said, typically it's someone who's already had run a business for a while, but you've been using it as a flex that you were the youngest graduate in Canada, which means that you must have shown something else that helped you get this MBA. And that could have been what people's theories were, could have been that your father runs a massive company and maybe you were employed by this company for a while and maybe that's what helped you with your application. I don't, I don't know. But I said, typically, typically means not always, typically means typically. And so the average age is 28 to 29. God, like I don't understand what the problem is. Then I go over some Reddit posts here, people saying that they think he's gonna get canceled soon. So there was a premonition. So I talk about that once again not defamation, not misinformation. People just thought you were gonna have a downfall because they didn't like your vibe. More, I hate the Be Better guy so much. Once again, I'm still reacting to Reddit posts of people saying that they don't like you, sorry. And then I go on your website and I go through what I think about your website. We've all done that. He'll get over it at some point. So yeah, this is his brand. It's from the oldest, well, um, from his oldest monastery on earth, Crafted Herbal Honey. So he essentially, it's like this ancient Greek botanical medicine and you go to this monastery and he puts that into his honey and he did a lot of videos on TikTok of like showing him traveling to this monastery and talking to these people, blah, blah, blah. But they literally sell their own honey and you can like buy their stuff on um, their own website. Like they'll just send it to you. So you can, you sell it for 80, they sell it for 16. That's what I said. You can buy it directly from the monastery. This big like mission that he's always on. So people saying he's basically just like drop shipping. I don't think he is. I think he is probably having this honey manufactured himself. Like I don't think he's just like relabeling their own honey, but you know, it's not as like crazy as what he makes out to be. But anyway, he's some purest ingredients from the holy mountain in Greece. By uniting them with honey, nature's prim, nature's prim, still don't know how to say that word. Why can't I, re I feel like my brain, I'm so tired. Anyway, it's a preservative and a bioactive delivery system crafted transformative elixirs tailored to nurture every pillar of health. So you have the sunny honey, which is infused with saffron sage and St. John's wort. St. John's wort was also a very controversial supplement. It can really help with, it can help with like mood boosting, but it also can make your birth control in ineffective and can make your, like if you're already on antidepressants, you shouldn't be taking it, which a lot of people let me know in the comments under this video actually. St. John's wort is something everyone needs to be careful with because it can interact with other medications. If I remember correctly, birth control and antidepressants are on that list. So you shouldn't be taking this honey. And I think that should be front and center that you shouldn't be taking this honey 
if you are on these other medications for profound mood improvement and brain health i think honey's great i think honey is super healthy super good for you for sure helps with oh i can't say for sure because i don't actually benefits of honey that was actually proven and things a lot of this stuff is not proven it's like anecdotal and so a lot of times you read these articles and they'll say like some people think honey helps with you know so i talk about the fact that i prefer more scientific measures that I, do, you know, the same criticisms that you had of Let Me Live by Kourtney Kardashian is the same stuff that I'm saying about your company. Yep, so I go through them and then I show the Let Me Live so talking shit about wellness brands. Okay, so this is his um, Kourtney Kardashian Let Me video and literally says Herbalism 101 in his thing. Like, I think it's completely lacking in self-awareness, really. I don't know how many degrees he has, but this is like a new degree that he's unlocked. I also put this on two times because it's a nine minute long, 10 minute long video, okay? So he has a master's in marketing and a master's in botanical herbalism and he's got an MBA. I mean, I don't know, some of that seems like it's starting to be a lie. Exposed why this brand by Kourtney Kardashian is one of the biggest scams I've seen in the supplement industry in a very, very long time. So full disclosure, before I filmed this video, I had a candle, an entire marketing breakdown of Lemmy that was exceedingly positive. I literally was obsessed with the marketing campaign from their e-commerce approach to their email marketing to the industrial design of this packaging, from the riches to small detail on top of that emulating the same shape and the pattern of the itself. I was so excited to talk about this brand and to finally talk about something positive on my page that I was excited about to the point that I was even putting together an award show for the best and the worst brand and was competing for the top spots. Given that context, imagine my shock and my disappointment when I actually read the ingredients in the deep dive on some of these more So I just I want to try the matcha because I love matcha and this is my first red flag. For those of you that can't see. So he talks about how there's probably, there's possibly, there can't possibly be enough in each serving to de-bloat, to lift your mood, to blah, blah. I said that the same could be said about your honey. That's what I said. It's the same thing. And I mean, if people want to take these supplements and if people want to eat your honey and they think that it's making a difference, fantastic. But the criticisms that you had of Kourtney Kardashian are the same stuff I'm seeing about you, and that's fine. Then I go through his page some more. Then I go over his Jake Paul video. I said, it seems like an ad, and I said, it's probably not, but it, you can't do a, an unbiased review when you're filming a video with the guy who owns the company. Same way I didn't reach out to you to do my unbiased video. Do you see, do you see how my logic just stays consistent throughout? And I said what I said, filming a video of Jake Paul while reviewing his brand, first of all, Jake Paul, and second of all, uh, it's a completely biased review. That's it. That's what I said. So here's the Jake Paul video. And I even say that it's probably not an ad in a typical sense. It's just, it's very biased to do a video with someone about their brand. Video of Jake Paul. Amazing. People gave him so much crap for it. He actually ended up taking it down. And then he did the Skase, Skase? Space Camp Wellness video. Okay, then we have the Space Camp Wellness video. He said that the lip balms were 80 something dollars when they were actually 36, but he just counted taxes and shipping into it to make it sound worse than it is while he's also selling $80 honey. I thought it was not, that's misinformation. That is like misrepresenting someone's company. No wonder the triplets got mad at you. No wonder their fans got mad at you. But you don't see that because there's a lack of self-awareness. And then we have the Reddit post with kind of what he said about him getting death threats. He seems to always poke the bear and then the moment he gets any pushback, it's I'm getting death threats, I'm this, I'm that. Don't, don't hit back at me. But when you're getting 15 million views per video talking about someone's downfall, that's fine. That's fine because you're a small business. But the moment someone claps back and says, hey, that's wrong. Now it's, oh, I'm being attacked, guys. I'm being attacked. And once again, I used to be like that too. I used to love dragging people down. And then the moment it got flipped on me, I would be like, oh, <laughs> poor me. Oh. And then I posted um, Nick from the triplets basically talking about his company and how what you said was actually misinformation about his company. If we're gonna get technical. And then I posted uh, people's TikToks about the downfall of you. Yes. Hi, so I have a master's degree in business and today I'm going to use it to analyze the marketing strategy of Kamala Harris's campaign and ultimately why I believe if she continues with the horrible marketing strategy she has been employing, why she will ultimately end up losing the presidency to Donald Trump. So obviously- Now, to give a bit of context, he is from Canada, which I mean, it, it is strange to comment this much on the politics of a country that you're not in. Some people say that's fine because Canada gets massively affected by what happens in the US. So I guess that makes sense. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but apparently both Kamala Harris and the Trump administration essentially are paying, doing like paid partnerships with influencers and stuff. So people have shown emails of the Kamala Harris administration essentially sending out emails to a bunch of different TikTokers and stuff saying, you know, what your rates for this, you just have to like repost some of our stuff and blah, blah. And Trump has kind of done the same thing. I'm pretty sure but he's also been on different streamers, live streams and stuff like Aiden Ross and he didn't have Logan Paul, I'm pretty sure. And then someone else. Clearly they're leaning heavily into like Gen Z marketing, influencer marketing. So people thought, it's not really true, people thought that Donald Trump paid him, like the Trump administration has paid him to do this video, which would be crazy, but it kind of would be like funny if like in this whole cancellation, it came out that he actually didn't undisclose sponsorship for the Trump administration to talk shit about Kamala Harris's marketing strategy and didn't disclose it. Like that'd be the cherry on top. So I said like people thought, but you didn't. That's what I said for everything. This is a highly emotional, contentious topic for a lot of people. But the reason why I did want to speak on it is that I think there's a lot of parallels to be drawn between the marketing of a product relying on show you guys what he's been exposed for he apologized for that video in this video so i wanted to come on here and it's true is that his fact was a fact 
the video on the downfall be better. So I've skipped through the TikToks, but you get it, the original Kamala Harris video and then his apology. And then people in the comments were talking about, can you talk about the downfall would be better? What's Air Boss? And these are getting 23,000 likes. What's Air Boss? We'll get to that in a minute. I knew this video was going to happen because I have a degree in marketing. Nepo baby realness. Hey, so what's Air Boss? Why are you apologizing? He actually made some really good points. There were some like right-wing people and Trump supporters that really loved his content on this. Now he was exposed for being a Nepo baby and that's why he has the MBA. Exposing be better. I was the youngest person in Canada to graduate with an MBA. Do you see the delusion? If you don't know by now, he uses drama to sell herbal honey, which he uses to make loosely regulated health and wellness claims like everyone else in the supplement industry. Food agrees and Elder of the Holy Mountain. I requested his blessing to take the wildflowers back home. Actually, you purchase their products, they sell to anyone, and which can easily be bought online. Power is rare medicine. Before I left, I asked one of the monks how they have thrived for so many centuries without modern medicine. He told me that every morning they drink tea with fresh honey. He said that flowers and honey are nature's most sacred medicine. Coincidentally, you can get honey from that monastery for around 16 euros or $18. Search for Mount Avas honey, similar prices on multiple sites, and even cheaper with his wholesale discounts. You can also find herbs from that monastery in Mount Avas for a few euros or dollars. You can also just mix herbs into your own honey at home. It was poorly researched, it was poorly articulated. Mount Avas monastery honey also found on Etsy. I cannot stand the So those are 18, 16 euros. So that's someone saying. You have a wellness brand that people don't agree with and it's overpriced. That's the TikTok I reacted to and that's the TikTok I agreed with. We have three minutes of this video left. If, if there's no like slam dunk at the end, I'm done. Blah, blah. Let's actually go on his again and see what he's selling it for. Oh, oh my God. 75 pounds, 80 pounds. It's sold out. Like some people should not have access to a credit card. You're spending $80 on some like honey when like you said, you can literally go on the website of the monastery that he gets the herbs from and buy it for 16 euros. Okay. Am I wrong? Mr. I spent 86 on three lip balms. Okay. Uh, then we have this. He has just deleted his apology video and is continuing to lose over 100,000 followers. His LinkedIn profile was exposed by this creator where we learned that the degree he always writes about is from a university ranked 29th in Canada. His so the original TikToker that did this video, let's actually deep dive into this. Who is this? The Gary guy. This is, he is in, he's from Toronto, Canada, and he's a Gen Z con career content podcast host. And he was the one that initially had exposed you here it is i just found be better on linkedin the guy who makes all the downfall videos of different celebrities who literally gained 600,000 followers on TikTok in just three months. So let's see who he really is. His real name is Tidemako Spitsakakis, and he got his undergrad at Wilfrid Laurier University, which is ranked 29th in Canada. In every video, he says, I was the youngest person in Canada to ever graduate with an MBA. And it's probably true because he got his MBA right after undergrad at age 23. Most people get their MBA at age 28 when they have five years of work experience. Anyways, during university, he so this is literally someone from Canada and in the DMs, I don't know if you guys remember, he said, you are misinformed about the MBA because it works different in Canada. I literally said the same thing and it works the same way in the UK and Canada then. Also, I'm not the only misinformed one because this content creator is literally from Canada. Uh, Shopify as a marketing specialist and then at another company. Then in 2022, he started his honey business better where he sells these herbal honey for $80 a jar this is how he learned about building a business and why he started criticizing celebrity brands online currently be better works at this company called Airboss of America as a market research manager Airboss of America manufactures rubber products in Ontario Canada also coincidentally be better's father Chris Pitakakis happens to be the president and CEO of Airboss of America the same company that he works at. And him and his family looks like they're doing pretty good. From this video, we can learn that B- Oh, so you're on a private jet and your dad allegedly is the CEO and president of a company that creates rubber, but you're a small business and I'm damaging a small business and you're making this in your basement. Like I'm sure you are making it in your basement, but not because you're like poor. He has a strong business background and real life work experiences, which makes him very good at yapping and breaking down complex cases like celebrity beauty brands. Also be better. If you're watching this video, I love your content and I would actually love to have you as a guest. So he didn't even do it in like bad blood. He loves your content where he is currently employed is not the honey he sells. It's a very profitable rubber company with ties to government contracts. A subsidiary of that company is named in an investigation into companies awarded huge contracts by the So you work for a company that your dad is a CEO of and that company has employed someone else who has dealt with Trump closely. Like what about this is misinformation? I don't actually really understand like what the problem is. Huh. So he's a never baby working for Airboss and the company has been financially massively helped by the Trump administration and you're now doing a downfall of Kamala Harris. I mean... The story writes itself. The story writes itself. That's pretty funny. The deal was directly ordered by the Trump White House through Trump henchman Peter Navarro. The same Peter Navarro currently serving prison time for refusing to cooperate with the January 6th investigation. It is alleged by Canadian commenters that he might be skirting around supplement regulations by marketing a food product as medicinal. I saw that someone on the Reddit page basically said that it doesn't comply with Canada's food regulations, but I didn't speak out on that because I 
don't know about Canada. The main criticism of Hamlet is microaggressions against women and people of color. So, so yeah, and then uh, what I actually end up finding is if you hated what I said about your brand, you would hate this video. And I wanna react to a little bit of it, but I do recommend watching it yourself. So I'm gonna link it with my prior video as well in the description. But from about, from about the halfway mark, we get um, this analysis of uh, the Be Better company. And I wanna watch just a little bit of it for you guys, just to tease you. And then you guys can watch it yourselves because I think it's a really, really good watch. This is by Ryan Beard Productions. TikToker who exposes scammers is actually a scammer. Don't tell Be Better about this video. He might get really upset about being called actually a scammer because he doesn't think that's that's really nice to his small business. Here's the video from about the 12 minute mark. I remember he talks about be better. She claims will elevate your daily mental well-being because the honey is infused with saffron, sage, and St. John's wort. I did some research online and I did find some studies that seem to indicate that saffron, sage, and St. John's wort can have a positive effect on people's mental well-being. But in my opinion, he has made multiple statements on social media, which reach far past just claiming that it can possibly help your mental well-being. And I hope to prove to you why I think he has engaged in false advertising. First, he tries to inflate how valuable saffron is by claiming that saffron is more valuable per pound than diamonds. Saffron is the only herb on the entire planet more expensive per pound than diamonds. But because of this, many companies like to take advantage of saffron's popularity by selling fraudulent versions online. Saffron is quite expensive. One pound of saffron is worth around $2,000. However, the average cost of a one carat diamond is around $4,000 and one carat equals 0. 0.0004 pounds. So there are 2,267 carats in a pound, which means that one pound of diamonds is worth $9 million. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but 9 million is a little bit more than 2,000. And so a blatant lie to make your honey seem more expensive than it really is. You're trying to get people to buy your saffron infused honey by claiming that saffron is way more valuable than it actually is, I would call that false advertising. A bunch of Be Better's marketing relies on the appeal to nature fallacy, which claims that natural things are better than unnatural things. That's precisely what I was saying. It is that typical, you know, if something's natural, it's, it's good, it's healthy, it's efficient. If it's not natural, it's bad which is exactly what I said. I said, you are a wellness brand criticizing other wellness brands. Packing my herb infused honey. For everyone that knows the only way to heal natural beings is through nature. The only way? The only way. The, the only way. Cause I'm pretty sure if someone has cancer, your honey is not, you know what I mean? If someone's like clinically depressed, St. John's wort can go fuck itself. Like really, really and truly. This is a completely ridiculous claim. There are all sorts of unnatural things which can heal humans, and there are all sorts of natural things which are dangerous to humans. Cyanide exists in nature, but it's obviously dangerous to humans. Tylenol doesn't exist in nature, but generally it's safe for humans. And I think that Be Better knows that this claim is a lie because they contradict it under the legal terms of service on their website. For individuals on antidepressant medications, Sunny Honey should not replace such medications, nor should they be combined unless explicitly suggested by a physician, which is typically not recommended. So on your website, you claim that Sunny Honey shouldn't replace antidepressant medications yet on your TikTok, you claim that the only way to heal natural beings is through nature. The story writes itself. Let me skip forward a little. You guys should go back and watch this video though. It talks about the ministry here. Forever or some bullshit. But in this same video, there's a picture with the words mind, body, and soul on it. So I think any reasonable person who watched this TikTok $80 when you can just buy these same ingredients for a is projection. It's him trying to tear down other businesses for their deceptive marketing tactics while engaging in deceptive marketing tactics. Now, why does Be Better claim that his honey is worth $80 when you can just buy these same ingredients for a fraction of the cost from a grocery store or pharmacy? Because his herbs and honey come from the holy mountain of Athos in Greece. Let's look at a few strange claims made on this page, explaining why they source their herbs from this holy mountain. Virgin land that has never been exposed to pollution, technology, or pesticides. What do you mean that the land has never been exposed to pollution? Everywhere on earth has been exposed to some level of pollution. And Greece as a country actually ranks on the lower end when it comes to air pollution in European countries. And the Mediterranean Sea that Mount Athos overlooks is also known for being incredibly polluted. Maybe this mountain has less pollution than other- All love to Greece. I loved Greece when I was there, but blatant lie blatant lie. Parts of Greece, but claiming that this mountain has never been exposed to pollution is obviously not true. And also it's pretty ironic that Be Better's entire brand is built around being pollution-free while he simultaneously works for his dad's rubber manufacturing company. Because manufacturing rubber releases a ton of pollution into the air, which goes completely against Be Better's entire message as a brand. Flowers native to Northern Greece, making them very- ma You guys get the point. I think this video is great. Watch the whole thing. It will be linked in the description. But if, if we all have the same opinion about your brand, Maybe you need to rethink stuff or just don't take our opinion too seriously. If you genuinely are super proud of your brand, you agree with everything you said, you agree with the prices, you agree with working for your dad's company, you agree with everything, you agree with your Kamala Harris video or you stand by your apology, I don't care. Stand by it or, or don't and change. But don't do this like double act where you're saying sorry for some things, but then if someone criticizes you, they're now the bad guy. We have to learn to just take accountability and just be, 
just be accountable for our behavior. Like I said, I posted my video that is full of opinions, theories, and a bunch of allegedlies essentially. But it was posted after you had already lost 150,000 subscribers. I mean followers, sorry. I'm so like YouTube minded. After you had already lost 150,000 followers and had to do a big apology on your platform. I didn't, I, I didn't ruin your company, your small business, you did. And you have to take accountability for that or you'll never learn. I think I've covered everything now. If you wanna still debunk my video, be my guest, but I hope this is the last time I have to speak about you and this whole situation. So yeah, subscribe, hit the bell, like, comment for engagement. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.